Welcome back. <laughs> I never know if you're joining me or not. <laughs> counter culture. I did that to just throw you off, mister. That's really, that's counter art culture. Right. Oh, you are Pastor Mark the last time I knew. Yes. And I mean, we're talking about uh, Exodus 3 got stuck. You just were on a roll at the end. This always happens, right? Like, you get on a roll and all of a sudden all these things are going to what? You, like, sometimes, he, 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 yes. It's easy for it's you to say. what happens when I want to say a lot, right? <laughs> say a lot. All right, I got a question for you. We were talking about that. Me. Could be your your like night name, sir. What did you say? Rantalot. Rantalot. <laughs> yeah, sir. Yeah. Sir Rantalot. Sir Rantalot. I love it. And there you go. <sighs> I need somebody to make that for me, sir Rantalot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Gotcha. All right. I got a question. Tell, we were talking about me. the fear of the Lord. We we're talking yes. about holy ground and people having respect for God and all of these things. And you mentioned a ton of things, and I want you to I want you to go back to that. But I have a question. Uh, frequently, we hear people on the outside of church say, "If I ever went to church, the walls would cave in, the did, place uh, would go up in yes, fire." Yes, I've heard that things, many times. Right? Yes, yeah. excellent. And we. We very quickly shoot that down and say, oh, no, 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 no. Our God loves everybody. That would be Because there's already a bunch of heathens that have come in and it didn't. So, no. Is it possible that yes. some of those speaking people mm -hmm. have a better concept of God than those people who are walking through the doors on a Sunday yes. morning? Yes. Yes. Pray tell why. That is a really good question. I think it is because of you bet your blessed assurance that that is what the problem is. They we have become okay. This is one of my problems. That Ooh. as a Wesleyan, I'm I'm not a big eternal security guy, right? But I am a blessed assurance guy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a difference. Yep, yep. Well, that might be a uh, chasing the wind someday. I think it probably is a very good chasing. The anyway, wind. Um, I think sometimes we get a little proud. Ooh. We get a little too sure of ourselves. Well, I'm, I'm, you know, it used to be kind of the thing of, of part of the problem. Sometimes people have problems with Wesleyans or American Holiness people is, mm -hmm. well, because we don't smoke, drink, or chew, or date girls that do. Ooh. But we had, were, you know, I have had people in my churches throughout the years that they didn't smoke, drink, or chew, or date girls that do, but they had the most unloving, unforgiving, critical, nasty spirit in them. There you go. That, but they were okay because they didn't do these certain things. They, they were, you know, as we say, Pharisaical. Mm -hmm. And to their credit, just like the Pharisees, they were trying to do what was right. But we can easily forget mm -hmm. that it is by grace that we are saved, not by our own righteousness. So and so there is something to say for someone to say, I could never go in there. And it is a very interesting point you make, that they have this idea that, man, if I go in there, the lightning bolts... Are going to come down on me. So is it possible that they are assuming that it's actually holy ground? Mm -hmm. Yeah. To some, they may not know that that's what they're saying, but I think they realize there is something there mm -hmm. that I don't qualify for. Mm -hmm. Now, in, which in, is very interesting. In the verses that we read <clears throat> last week, Moses responds to God, right? Here, here I am. Interesting. Lee, not like Isaiah, he does not say, here am I, send me. Send my sister. <laughs> he doesn't say that at all. He just says, here I am, that's my name. Right? So that's kind of like roll Here's call my in name. school. That's my name, God, don't wear it out. How many of you said that a few times in school, didn't you? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I, I might have said it a whole bunch of times. You probably right? did, yeah. But, but we see in verse, uh, we see verse 6, right? God says, I am, I am the God Right of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I am that God. And for some reason, the connection, right, all of a sudden was made with Moses because he went from, yep, yep, it's me, here I am, right, to the mo then Moses hit his face. He was afraid to look at God, right? In that moment when God says, I am Moses gets it, right? Question. Why don't we have more I am moments in church? I Okay, I'm going to go there. I'm going to talk from my frame of reference of being a Wesleyan. <clears throat> I think we have a lot of people in the church mm -hmm. who have quit growing mm -hmm. in their faith 
What do you mean? They have not gone on to what I would say is, is sanctification. Letting God work in them to grow into more, to being more Christ-like. They are satisfied where they're at. So they've accepted I have, that yeah, I, Jesus I, I, yeah, who he says is, he is. He is their Savior. They have not let Jesus be their Lord. Oh, oh. You better unpack that for a second. Well, what they've, 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 okay. And I, and there was actually a, a guy, a Pastor Paul Washer, I heard him. I don't listen to him all the time, but I heard a little clip of a sermon he preached. And, and he was talking about how there are many Christians who are, who are not going to, who are not really saved because they pray to prayer, which is not in the Bible. I know you're going to call me a heretic now. Nowhere in the Bible is the sinner's prayer in there. We are to believe and, and, and in Jesus yep. and to believe that God raised him from the dead yep. and you will be saved. And it is a sincerity of belief, okay? Yep. Yep. It isn't just, oh yeah, Jesus is Lord. Okay, yeah, I believe all that. No, 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 not the Sunday school answers. It is truly believing in your heart. So they have been led to believe that if I pray this prayer, or here's the one, I was baptized, so I'm good there now. You go. Yep. I became a, was baptized and became a member of the church. I became a member of the church. And I, will, I remember back uh, years ago now, I've been walking with the Lord for about 35 years, uh, thereabouts. And um, I remember a, a guy in the church, I was 21, 22. He was uh, probably about 20 years old. He was like a big brother to me. And I remember we had gone, um, it was Sunday night, we had Sunday night service in those days, and uh, the pastor and his wife had been invited over to his mom and dad's, and she said, hey, you know, his, his mom said, hey, why don't you and Butch come on over and, and uh, have refreshments? So the old people were in talking, and so Butch and I went off, and we just were kind of visiting, and he says to me, he goes, Mark, i got to tell you, I got saved this week. I'm like, what? <laughs> Wait, what? You know? And he goes, no, I did. Now, he led the worship on Sunday night, led singing on Sunday nights. He taught Sunday school and did all these things. Saved. He got saved. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, he goes, he goes I was standing there at my machine. He worked at a factory. Okay. And he goes, there was a guy, in, a college student in for the summer. He got parked right next to me. He started witnessing to me about Jesus and asked me if I had ever, if I was saved, if I, asked, if I had asked the Lord into my life. And he goes, Mark, he goes, I came under such conviction. He goes, I've never, he goes, I was raised in the church. Yep. And nobody ever no asked. No one ever asked. They just assumed I was saved. Yep. And he goes, I asked Christ into my life, received his forgiveness. Butch died several years later. Yeah. And, and I'm like, wow. Wow. How many people are out there? Well, I prayed a prayer, but many, you're living like the devil. How many? I got baptized, but you're living like the devil. How many pastors, elders, deacons are out there? How many pastors got Did called? Not really got called, but grandma called them. God's yeah. calling you to be a pastor. Yep. So I guess I better be a pastor. You ain't no pastor. So we haven't we haven't had the holy ground moment where God says to us, I am. No, no. And we hit the ground. Right. Right? We right. do a face plant because we we know that, right? So had an interesting talk last night with, with some of my spiritual leaders up at Lakeview, right? And I asked them the question, if the Holy Spirit was really in this place, right, what are the things that we would see? If this place was really turned into holy ground, what are the things we would see? We went to Isaiah chapter 61 to the first three the verses. The ground would be shaken right? where we're at too. And Here's six. what would happen. Right Here are the things. Strange things would be happening in our churches. That's, that's right. But instead, it, it's all about feelings. And in this case, do you think that Moses felt super good about seeing the Lord? Yeah. yeah one of the greatest compliments my church pays me mm -hmm. is they call me Captain Meddler. Mm, yes. On on the really good days, a yep. general meddler. Yep. And and they'll just, you know, I'll see him do this. A pastor cross the line, and yep. guess what? I run right over it. Yep. I am like a dog that goes through the the electric fence, and I don't care if you, the dog doesn't know if he goes through quick enough. He just gets a little tickle and he's gone. Right. You know. But why? Do you tell me that I'm I'm gone, baby? That's why because one of my favorite questions is, can I ask you a hard question? Yes. Can I meddle? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. It's yeah, and 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 we need to have those tough questions asked of us. We, we, to take it, you know, Fow, James Fowler, you know, his book The Stages of Faith. Mm -hmm. And it, one of the things I remember kind of my interpretation coming out of that book was most Christians get to the place where 2 plus 2 equals 4. Mhm. Mm it's good enough. Yeah, I, I I go to church. I yep. I read my Bible maybe. I pray, maybe, 
when I get into a bind, yep. you know, they're not serving the Lord. They're not doing anything God tells them to do. Mm-hmm. And they're probably lying about how much they're reading their Bible and how much they're praying. Mm-hmm. So what is, the, what is it? The average churchgoer today goes to church less than two times a month. Yes. I think is what this statistic is. less than is. two hours a month. So yeah, yeah. yeah. It's two. And, and so, uh, you know, and yet they want all these things. Well, we want childcare and everything else. But yet they don't want to. They don't want to serve, you know. Even a smaller church, like oh, we got all these problems. We, I've gone to a bigger church. One of the churches I went to on vacation, mm-hmm. probably 100, 150 people. They're out of trouble getting children's workers. Yep. I'm like, man, I thought it was just you know the small mm-hmm. church. No, no. Nope. It, it, we because here's the problem. Mm-hmm. Here's the problem. I've said this. And I'll, I'll, I've said it from the pulpit. I'm saying it now. The problem is. We went to the seeker sensitive stuff 30 years ago, 35 years ago, which was fine. We need to try and, and reach those who are lost. I'm not denying that. But here, but it, what we did is we also turned mm-hmm. believers into seekers. Yep. Because now yep. I want what I want. But here's the thing I, I, as I pondered this, this consumer mentality in the church was there before the seeker sensitive. It's always because. Good. I want what I want when I want it. Yep. I, that's my Sunday school class. That's my piano bench. Yep. That's, I've always, I, we've always done it that way. Yep. Yep. There's some sacred cows that need to be butchered. But in the process, what we've done is we have more consumers. Uh, we have a bigger consumer mentality than we do a contributor mentality. And I'm talking about not just financial contributions. Talk I'm talking about... God, pastor, is there something that needs to be done around here that I can do? Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. Nope. But the but the consumer mentality says, here am I, Lord, send Andy. Yeah. Or here am I, feed me. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You love the line when people leave a church. Well, I'm just not getting fed. No, you ain't eating. You don't like what's on the table. And I'm going to tell you what happened to the Hanson fan kids when they you didn't like it. You either sat there until you ate it or you went without. So my this, mom, how many times my mom say, I'm not a short order cook? This is a great way to close out this counterculture because unbeknownst to all of our counterculturites, you are about ready to try something that you have said that you do not like and do not want to eat. Brussels sprouts. <laughs> You are about to may ready. God may God have mercy on my soul. We will we'll let you know. I may be a convert. This goes. I may be a Brussels sproutian. He might. He might. And he might decide he really doesn't like them. No, okay. So the, the funny time. story. So the funny story. A couple years ago, I go to the the Chinese buffet, Ooh. and I'm like, "There's Brussels sprouts. I've never had one. So my dad didn't like them, so we didn't have them. So I thought this is a perfect time." I go sit down. Sit, my wife sat next to me. A lady in the church was taking us to dinner. Was sitting there, and I said, "I've never had a Brussels sprout." I put that thing in my mouth. Boom! I mean, it came <laughs> flying out like a projectile. We're dying laughing. It's funny. <laughs> and I said, "I'll never eat another one of those again." So never say never. Never. A buddy of mine told me he makes them with garlic and something else. So he's supposed to make some for me sometimes. But our producer is making today for birthday bre- lunch, and I am going to try it. I am brave. Be strong and courageous, saith the Lord. It's counterculture. It is counterculture. We'll see you next time. Grace and peace.